Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Thank you so much for clicking onto my channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are new here, my name is Natasha Campbell and I am a freelance project manager, specifically in the gaming, media, publishing and creative agencies, marketing and advertising agencies. So they're the sectors that I specialize in. That's what I've been doing as a freelance project manager. So let's just start off by talking about what a freelancer is. So by definition, a freelancer is someone who is self-employed and hired to work for different companies on particular assignments. Sometimes they're three months, four months. My longest contract has been 10 months. Um, so you can just think about it if you're if you're making if you're making money through being self-employed, through getting a day rate and you're working for 10 months. Um, and if you compare what you were to make to somebody who is your counterpart as a project manager, you are essentially getting paid double what they're getting paid. From a financial perspective, it's definitely worth looking into. So we'll get into more figures and numbers in a bit. But for now, I just want to kind of keep it quite basic. So what we're going to talk about next is outside or inside IR35. So IR35 came about a couple of years ago. So there's two definitions of IR35. There's inside and there's outside IR35, okay? So for inside IR35, what this means is that you are considered for tax purposes an employee for an end client and therefore subject to PAYE. So you are on the payroll system. You're still getting paid a day rate, but it's on a payroll basis. So you are entitled to holiday pay as well. It, it says here, if you are operating inside IR35, you simply need to ensure that the appropriate taxes are being paid, which usually which usually involves a deemed payment or income tax being made at the end of the year. So essentially, you're paying the same amount of taxes as somebody who is on a payroll system. So there's another way around freelancing, which is outside IR35, which is what I do. I only take on roles that are outside the IR35 because I can pay, I pay less tax. There is no way someone who's quite entrepreneurial, someone who is all about financial freedom, yeah, financial freedom, I'm not trying to be paying given the government all of my money, all of my hard earned money. Okay. So in terms of what outside IR35 means, it means that you are operating as a genuine business and therefore operating outside the IR35 rules. So if you are operating outside IR35, you are able to pay yourself a salary, draw the remainder of income as dividends and remain responsible for your taxes as usual. Hallelujah. Now that is quite challenging for some people because the thought of potentially being out of work is quite daunting for them but like I was saying you could make so much more money than your counterpart in the exact same role in the permanent position that because of the tax because of the ways around the taxes that you could actually save up so much money just you know in case you are out of a contract because let's be real like this is the reality you might be out of a contract for some time you're operating as a self-employed business owner so this for me as a freelancer, this isn't it for me. Like there's so much more. I'm very, like I said, I'm very much entrepreneurial. So I would like to um, to grow in the aspect of business. And um, I do have other business ventures that I can talk about in another video that myself and my husband are doing um, and and how, how far I want to take project management. Because before I got into freelancing, my intention was to really grow the ladder and go into being a, you know, head of a project management team, head of production. That was my intention until I just was really frustrated about the financial elements of working in a as a permanent project manager. As a permanent member of staff essentially. It could be it could be any role. I could be working in finance and you know and there could be a freelancer doing the same role as me and essentially pay, getting paid double and triple the amount that I'm getting paid for for doing the same job and for working at the same amount of time that I've been working there. You know what I mean? That is key for me. It's the the way around the financial element of working you could be earning from 200 pounds a day to 300 pounds a day 350 pounds a day 400 450 pounds a day depending on what industry you are in so if you are looking to get into project management I would highly consider some of the industries 
that pay a lot more than other project management industries, okay? So one of them being construction is something that pays quite high and I'm talking the if you and I'm looking I'm talking mainly from a perspective of freelancing so you're looking at around 550 pounds a day some of them pay even more than that so I see them all the time as I'm looking around and just like keep keeping my eye out on the market when you type in project manager into google sometimes if you're not specific different types of roles come up so construction project management you know you're getting paid you can get paid a lot you can demand a lot more so you know digital as well yeah you, you're looking at around 350 sometimes the 400 rank it you're looking at 354 450 as well so it really does depend and obviously the more experience you have the more you can command but don't let anybody tell you because i have had people tell me no if you are a for example a midweight pm you can only get 200 pounds a day which is absolutely false you command what you earn okay you are the one that says this is my day rate if you have an interview and they like you you'll be hired if they want to negotiate they can negotiate but don't let anybody tell you that you need to charge 200 or less than that a day okay I was working with a really really talented illustrator and um, I worked with her as a, when she was permanent at a previous role in gaming and then she came to another gaming um, company that I freelanced at and she came in as a freelancer and and freelance illustrators can charge up to 300 pound 400 350 pounds a day she charged 200 pounds a day when I saw what she set her day rate at at 200 pounds a day I thought to myself why why like obviously some other either she's nervous or she doesn't know she doesn't, she doesn't have the experience to know but I had I've had personally someone say to me that only senior pms or project directors can get 300 pounds a day which is a total lie so Never be afraid to ask for the day rate that you want, okay? And never let anybody tell you how much you should earn. Another reason why I really enjoy freelancing is the wide range of experiences I have under my belt now because I have been able to, you know, go from sector to sector. Now, that might not suit some people because some people might want to stay in a particular field. For me, whenever I've gone into a new role, what's been, I am more I guess you could say more money driven I go into roles thinking okay how much can I make on this role if I take this role that might be in you know publishing I could they're only offering 200 250 so I'm not going to take that I'm going to go for this role that that's offering me you know 250 300 350 for example so you have to be um I guess you have to be quite regimented on what you want you've got to be clear set on what you want and you can't let anybody kind of deter you from what you want to do and uh obviously for me I am involved in other areas like investments and trading so I my intention is to use the money that I make to invest in other ventures um so yeah I think financial freedom is really key for me so if you're someone who wants to make a lot of money and I know by the way I know people who have freelanced and have bought their properties in a year uh, from freelancing okay so it's it's possible to do these things you just have to be savvy minded and really really you know just work the system work your budgets and you know if you're going for inside IR35 roles you're still paying a high level of tax if you're going for outside IR35 roles there may be less of those in comparison to inside but if you just stay focused on what you're trying to achieve you will you'll get what you want at the end of the day but essentially mm -mm, IR35 has kind of really really changed the game for freelancing because it has made it much more difficult to get roles that you want you can't just work with any and everybody so um yeah for me it's definitely outside IR35 all the way and I have tried inside by the way I have gone inside um let, just to be very transparent with you guys um I was inside IR35 and I was on a day rate of 475. It was negotiated um, at that rate. It was, it, they aimed, they targeted, initially it was a lower day rate than that, but um, I managed to get it up to 475. And um, when I took my pay home at the end of the month, I was paying the taxes. It was like, five thousand pounds four to five thousand pounds out of my monthly salary and it's just like 
if I was outside IR35, I could be bringing home 10K a month, you know. So it was really frustrating, really frustrating. Um, but just for some, it's not a big deal. It's just part of, you know, it's how it's how life goes. But for me, you've got people, you know, you've got companies in Dubai that, that don't, that don't, people in Dubai that don't pay taxes. So it's just like, it depends on your mindset and who you are as a person. Most people are happy to have a stable job. And that's what comforts them. And that is it. So it is all about your preference. And it is all about, you know, how you how you see your life going, how you what you want for your life. So it's all the personal preference thing. So, um, yeah, you guys do whatever is best for you. And uh, yeah, I really hope that this video is of value to those that do perhaps want to make money. They do that do maybe want to venture out into the freelancing world when they when they calculate how much money they can make. Um, especially if you're, you know, struggling at the moment, because truth of the matter is cost of living has gone up crazily. Is that a word? Crazily. But yeah, cost of living has increased massively. So um, yeah, you just want to, you want to, you want to do what's right for you, what's right for your financial circumstances so that you can still thrive and enjoy your life. Okay, so thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you found it valuable. Please do comment, ask me any questions and I am... I will be sure to get back to you on those and I shall see you in my next video. All right, take care guys. Bye.